Hey everybody, this is Mr. Um. I'm going to give an overview of the uh, tower game that we're going to be creating in JavaScript and tell you a little bit about the game. This is my webpage, Mr. Um Rocks. If you want to play the game, you can come here and you get a little loading screen and then you come in and you see some of the wonderful artwork that uh, one of my girls did last year, Katarina. And uh, this was really a group project. We had kids writing, uh, creating art and we had kids writing computer code. Uh, the, the kids worked in teams of four or five. Each team had a team leader and they were keeping their code on GitHub and so the kids were making branches and doing their code as sort of individual subsets of the, of the project and then they would do pull requests and the team leaders would pull it back in. And so it was a pretty sophisticated program for high school students and all of these kids had a year of advanced placement computer science uh, in, in Java, not the principal's class, but the Java class. And so they were pretty solid coders coming in. They knew how to, they knew about for loops and arrays and classes and objects and all the things that we learn in the AP curriculum. And so we wanted to give them, for their second year, we wanted to give them JavaScript. And uh, Java and JavaScript are very different languages. And so I'm expecting that the people who are going through this course have already uh, had some foundation in coding. I'm not going to be explaining for loops and arrays, but I'll talk about sort of the differences between Java and JavaScript along the way. I'll talk about, uh, I'll actually show you how to do the artwork for this. If you want to do some of the artwork, some of the techniques that uh, we did, you can do that. Uh, I'll show you some flash techniques and some Photoshop techniques. Um, and we'll just do lots of different things. So hopefully by the time somebody comes to the end of this series they will be able to make their own games based on these same ideas so let's go ahead and see what it looks like uh, some music's gonna come on and so let's see let's go to instructions I just love this artwork all of these dragons were created by Katarina so we have some very simple instructions and then if we go to exit we can see some credits so the kids that were involved you can see their names my team leaders were Sabina Charles and Rodrigo and these are some of the kids that were writing code uh, special thanks to Mr. Carey, who's a retired C++ coder. Last year was his first year in JavaScript, and he was very helpful. And so we're going to go back to uh, retry now and see what the game looks like. And I'll stop talking when the game is played. Uh, but basically, we're going to place blocks on the canvas, and then the peasants are going to come out, and they're going to use pathfinding to find their way to the yellow dot in the bottom right-hand corner. And uh, as we change where the blocks are, uh, the peasants are, it has real-time pathfinding, and so that's part of, you know, one of the lessons will be about how to do that. So let's go ahead and play, and I'm going to build the blocks and place the towers, and the peasants are going to try to reach the uh, yellow dot. Dragons have different kinds of bullets or flames, and uh, they have different strengths and powers. And in the end, we're going to create a sandbox version of this where you can tweak all the variables so you can get the game to play just like you want it to. We have little sliders on the side that will affect all the key variables, and you can create each level the way that you want it. And I hope it's a lot of fun. If I were to, here, let's wait for the second wave to come out, and we'll just illustrate the pathfinding. That off because we create an invalid map. If I open this up, so let's close this, let the peasants come out. Block this off. And, oh, it's got to go the other way. So they know how to find their way to the yellow dots. So let's go ahead and go back. And that's what it looks like. So that's our dragon game. We could, uh, here's a, just another version using goblins. Same game, I just had my different students make uh, different artwork, and so this guy is using different kinds of enemies. He has goblins and kind of a medieval um, theme, and you can drag these guys out, and they are going to have different kinds of blocks. Same code, just threw in different artwork, and that was very, very simple. So my art kids can draw the artwork for this, and my coding kids can uh, make the code. And once the code is done, kids that are interested can draw, the or can draw the artwork for this game. I always close this and open that up. Okay, 
So that's what it looks like. Again, it's not for beginners. It's for people who understand coding in some language and want to get introduced into JavaScript. I won't be describing the basics of coding, but as we go through, I'll talk about how JavaScript is different than Java, and hopefully you'll learn some art techniques. Uh, we'll be using uh, sprite sheets. We'll be using um, uh, dragons that could be actually animated, so instead of a single dragon object just rotating around, he could be flapping his wings or wagging his tail or what have you, and so all of those kinds of techniques, and I hope it's interesting, I hope you enjoy this, and I hope it is a worthwhile set of videos. That's all for tonight. Bye-bye.